Hi Carrie Ann, so here is your father's 613 speed timer or POGUE as you will often hear these referred to with the yellow sunburst dial and uh, due to the astronaut Colonel POGUE which I've mentioned to you previously. It's in beautiful original condition. It has been worn and cherished and looked after, which is very, very nice to see. It has some battle scars on it, which is nice. It's indicative of a, a life on the wrist uh, being enjoyed, and that's always nice to see. It's in very good condition. It was in really good condition internally, and it's in very good condition ex externally, with the exceptions of the, the crystal being very, very uh, scuffed up, as, as you'll know. Obviously, that's got a new crystal on now. Uh, but the bezel, which often gets chipped and marked and damaged, is in really nice condition, which is good as well. The tachymeter ring. This is a fixed bezel, by the way. This doesn't rotate. It has a tachymeter scale on, which is used for timing um, uh, distance uh, and average speeds over a distance. So should you ever feel the need to check how fast your uh, your the average speed over the course of a mile or a kilometer is you can do that with this watch which is nice to know so a couple of little things with the Seiko's vintage Seiko's and also with or more specifically with the 6139 so the first thing you'll notice with this is you cannot manually wind the watch if you rotate the crown in the in position all that does is rotate the inner bezel and this is handy with regards to rotating the bezel to use as a second timer function while you've got your chronograph running for example and it doesn't hand wind because these watches don't hand wind and this is true for very very many of the 70s Seiko automatic wind watches they are auto wind only the good news is that the automatic wind function on these, they use a special uh, system with a, a, a V-shaped set of fingers called uh, Magic uh, magic Fingers winding system, which is, uh, is actually a pole lever. And one side pulls, one side pushes, and it rotates via the oscillating weight in the back. And one side pushes a wheel and one side pulls the wheel so it's constantly going in one direction which means it's bi-directional winding no matter which way the oscillating weight moves it's winding the watch and on the wrist it will wind to fully wound in approximately five hours and that's with general sort of wandering around um, not you know not excessive use not marching not swinging your arms to huge great arcs or running or anything like that just general use you will get uh, the watch fully wound in four to five hours on a full wind this will run for about a day and a half and to start it up when you haven't worn it for a while and the spring has completely wound down you do a thing called the Seiko Shake. Uh, there's lots of nicknames in the world of Seikos, but essentially what you're doing is you are oscillating the weight to start it winding the main spring, and as if you would put a couple of winds on and then put it on your wrist, for example. Obviously, you can't do that manually with the crown. So you hold the watch like so, and you just shake it like that side to side. It quite literally tells you in the Seiko manual this is is what you do you hold it like so and shake it like this I tend to do this myself so it's the same kind of thing but you imagine you've got a frying pan with a pancake that you're ready to flip and it's that kind of motion and you can actually feel the weight the oscillating weight spin and this will get it starting to wind so if you do that for approximately a minute you'll note that the second hand starts moving and it will start to run and then at that point you can set the date and time and pop it on your wrist and four or five hours later that will be fully wound and, um, and as I say if you, you can then take that off at night put it on your bedside table or what have you and it will still be running in the morning and you just fasten it back on your wrist and away you go so that's the automatic winding system as I say there's no manual winding whatsoever on these the time setting there's only one position so you pull the crown out to the time setting position. You turn the crown counterclockwise like so. And this turns the hands. Let me zoom in so you can actually see this. 
So we're turning the crown counterclockwise, which rotates the hands. And then as it comes up to midnight, you'll notice the date changes followed by the day, which fully changes. It will change over to the in-between because it has the days in, uh, in this case, French and uh, English. And whichever one you've chosen, whichever language you've chosen, it will flip over to the next day by approximately 2 a.m. These are just slightly staggered. It's, it's the way that they're designed. And for setting the day and date ready to wear, the recommendation is that you set this when it is in the lower quadrant, when the power hand is in the lower quadrant of the dial, which is this sort of lower portion like so. So when the hour hand is down here, you know you're safe to set the day and date. And the day and date is set by pushing the crown in, some clicks in, and then you need to push that. And this will change the day and date simultaneously. That's a long push until it actually bottoms out and stops. And this will change the day and date simultaneously, as you see. Once you've gotten the correct day, so let's say it is Saturday, and it's Saturday the 3rd, you then give it a half press and you can sort of feel a notch there. It's not a distinctive click, but it's a, it's a notch. So let's say it's Saturday the 3rd, so you would half press until that goes round to the 3rd and that's your date set. You can then proceed to set the time and if the time is in the upper quadrant, of course, um, it doesn't matter once the day and date is set. The reason for this is while the hands are in this upper section, the fingers that change the day and date at midnight are actually starting to engage. So as you're pushing this to change it, it can damage the finger, which is actually made of plastic and designed uh, to be able to be broken in this instance, but it can actually damage that finger and prevent the day and date changing over at midnight as it should. So there are two ways of, of working this. You can either turn it around until it's past midnight and then bring the hour hand down past three o'clock and set today's day and date if you're in the morning. You do the same obviously if it's p.m. but you just cycle around a second time or set it the first time and then cycle around afterwards. Or if it's, um, if it's sort of late p.m. you know you're going to be wearing it tomorrow and you want to set it so it's ready for tomorrow um, um, you can set the date and then just run it around until it clicks over to the correct day and date at midnight. Hopefully that made sense. It made sense in my head. I probably didn't explain that very well. But essentially, the important points, the salient points are this lower quadrant, sort of just under the three and under the nine. Um, if, make sure that the hour hand is down there while you're changing the day and date. And uh, I find that I, with these cases, because the crown is almost flush, I actually have to use my thumbnail to give that a full press. And you can see there, hopefully, the two languages for the day and date as I press that. And then as I just give that a half press, you can see that changes the date only, like so. The chronograph. Start and stop are the top button and these do have a little bit of resistance because the mechanical, mechanical chronographs by their very nature have a bit of resistance. So if you've been used to using a quartz one, for example, uh, this will seem a little odd at first, but um, as I say a little bit of resistance, but it will spring back quite nicely. And then the reset button is the bottom one here. Quite a bit more resistance on that one because you're actually pressing a very strong spring inside to bring the hammer down on the chronograph heart faces. The watch will run with the chronograph stopped. So you'll see here you've got your sweep seconds hand at the 12 and your sub dial hand for the 30 minute counter pointing straight up towards the 12 as well. The watch will continue to run like this. However, 
it's advisable that when you're using the watch and when you're not using the watch, um, just generally, that you keep the chronograph running continuously. You can, of course, stop, start, stop, start, uh, stop, reset, start, etc. at your leisure. That's what it's designed for. It's a chronograph. It's designed to be used and please do use it. So you can use it to time things. Um, I actually use a chronograph quite a lot myself. I time, time my lunch breaks at work. I time uh, things when I'm cooking. I, uh, I, I love chronographs myself and I use, I use it for a lot of um, a lot of things. You'd be surprised how many things you can use it for. Uh, most people nowadays tend to just set a countdown timer on their phones or ask Alexa to do it, but um, I, I like the old fashioned ways. Uh, but as I say, it will uh, keep it running in normal use, but do feel free to stop it, reset it and start it to time things and use it as a chronograph. Just leave it running when you're not actually using it or you're not waiting to start to time an event. And the reason for this is this chronograph uses what's called a vertical clutch and it has the the pinion which the sweep seconds hand sits on at the front here goes right the way back it has a driving wheel with uh, teeth a gear wheel and then it has two discs with a spring which presses them together and creates the friction that allows that driving wheel to rotate the entire um, the entire shaft with the seconds hand on when you press the stop button, two fingers clip in like a pair of scissors and they take, they, uh, they grab that, those discs where the spring uh, pressure is put on the driving uh, motion. And what happens there is it will stop the chronograph hand precisely where it is like there, for example. But the, the actual gear wheel will continue to drive and it will slip on the shaft. It's designed to work that way. What happens if you leave it stopped is the spring is under tension. And because it's, un, it's compressed and it's under tension, it will weaken very much like any spring. If you get two springs of equal length and you sit a very heavy weight on one and you leave it for 10 years and you leave the other one for 10 years, 10 years later, if you take that weight off, that spring will probably be about three quarters of its original length and it will have much, much less spring and therefore much less tension on anything that it was trying to force apart than the spring that didn't have the weight on it. And what this does is it means that there's not enough spring tension to provide the friction to drive the seconds hand. And this results in a very inaccurate seconds hand because it keeps slipping especially when it reaches the 12 o'clock position, which is where the finger engages with the intermediate wheel and then the minute wheel to actually drive that wheel over from one minute to the next minute. So it's not something that's going to happen overnight. Uh, you've no need to panic if you've stopped the chronograph and then you put it away and you pick, take it out a couple of days later and think, oh, I stopped the chronograph. It's, it's not going to weaken and be destroyed overnight, but it is important that you do try and remember to leave it running and it won't hurt the watch at all. It's, it has no detrimental effect on it. It's absolutely fine to do that. You'll note that when the mainspring power does run down, these will typically run out of power and stop with the seconds hand just before the 12 o'clock position because that's the point where it's the mainspring doesn't have quite enough power to push that minute hand over that's pretty much all there is to it the uh, the case and bracelet have had a good clean they're all nice and clean for you and uh, there's, there's really very little to, to say about keeping it clean. I've fitted new spring bars for you. The old ones had seen better days. Uh, all of your old parts are, are coming back with the watch, incidentally. It's had new gaskets on the pushers, the crown and the case back, which is standard on a service. I would replace all, uh, all of these gaskets because these are relevant to water tightness. On the subject of water tightness, it has been pressure tested and it pressure tests as watertight. Being vintage, however, I always recommend that you do not submerse uh, uh, vintage watches because 
they are prone to wear over the years, especially in things like crown tubes from constant use pulling in and out, setting the hands and what have you, pusher tubes. And then the case backs, especially on vintage Seikos, can have a habit of corroding internally because the steel that they used back in the 70s wasn't quite as high a grade of stainless as the steel that they use nowadays. That said, this one is very clean. It has pressure tested fine, but I wouldn't advise submersing it nonetheless. And especially with chronographs in general, I don't advise it. But that's the whole thing. So uh, hopefully you will have many, many years of joy with this watch as your father did. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope uh, this has been a useful little uh, bit of information for you if uh, you're new to the whole vintage mechanical Seiko thing. <laughs>